we continue talking about Spark SQL, our last video left off at the point where we had loaded in a CSV file, we had specified a schema for it, and that also required specifying a date format so that the dates in the CSV could be read in appropriately. And now I would like to look a little bit at the data that's in this file. Okay, now, there is a lot of different stuff in this file. Uh, and it really doesn't make any sense to compare different measurement types. So if I were going to uh, work with this, I would need to do some uh, you know, filtering down. So for example, I might want to get just the maximum temperatures from 2017. And from what we know about the RDDs, this would be done with a filter operation. Because this is SQL based, there is also a where. But one thing that you will notice in both cases is that, well, there is a new operation that takes a, a uh, function here. If you look in the API, you'll see that that particular operation, in fact, let's go look in the API at that particular operation. So this is inside of our data set and it is under filter it is labeled as experimental okay so I'm going to not use it right now um, instead we are going to use these others and in particular this version right here which takes something called a column and in order for this to make sense we have to introduce what the columns are well in some ways it's intuitive right a column here, let me finish this off, so we need to put something inside of there. A column is simply one of these columns. Okay, At least that's what it would kind of be intuitively, except it has to be more than that, right? So I can't just say filter and even how would I say filter date. I don't want to filter a date. I want to filter something like the M type is equal to T max because that's that's what I'm doing here. If we were doing this with uh, a the case classes, we might have done something like or something like M type equals equals T max. Now that won't work here because not just because I can't type T max, but because this is a row. It doesn't have an M type in it. Uh, once again, there is an experimental feature that would allow us to do that type of thing, and we'll focus more on that when we talk about data sets in a future video. But here we want to work with the version that takes a column. So going back to the API, there is a column class, and it has a little help up here that tells you different ways that you can make columns. You can refer to a column of a particular data frame, and there are times when you do need to do this. You need to be specific about which data frame you want the column for. And you can simply use the apply method to call, give it a string for the column name you want. You can get a more generic version of the column name with call followed by that string. The one that I see used most is a dollar sign followed by the string for the column name. Uh, personally, another version that they don't show here that, that's my favorite, probably because it has the fewest characters, it's the shortest, is to use a Scala symbol. So let's go back and let's test those possibilities. So as I said, the one that I think is used the most is to refer to a column like that. And if I were to hit save on this, notice that this now compiles. Okay. Uh, once again, the data frames are pretty much dynamically typed. This is really not a happy statement. I mean, what does it mean for M type to be true or false? Uh, for all I know, this might actually work, but it would give us back probably all the values because everything has something in M type. What I really want is I only want the M types that are equal to a particular string. Let's go back to the API. So one of the things about column is it actually has a lot of these operations that we associate with things like numeric values or doing comparisons 
Note that this uses a triple equals instead of a double equals. Uh, an inequality is a, an equal bang equal. They also have an equality that works against null values. And so based upon that, it seems intuitive that we might do something like this. We can check whether or not that does what we want by calling the show method, whoops, tmax2017, and running our program. I should probably get rid of the show and the print schema up here. Note that this last table indeed only has values of tmax. So it appears that this works, this does what we want. And the reason this works is because this, this dollar sign followed by a string, gives us a column. Column has a triple equals defined on it, which gives us back another column. As I said, my preferred way of doing this, I will do it for something, I'll also pull out the tmin. So let's get the minimum value where m type is equal to tmin, and I am going to use a Scala symbol instead. So the symbols in Scala uh, are simply a single quote followed by whatever set of characters you want. And there is an implicit conversion that will take a symbol and give you back a column. Um, if you come here, it says implicit conversion found that takes symbol to column. So this would give us the minimum temperatures and you know what I want to do is actually possibly find the average temperature. Okay. We'll come back in the next video and we'll talk about how we're going to do that. So just by doing a filter and pulling out a column here, we were able to get a table that has some element of the data that we want. But now I need to get the Tmaxes and the Tmins for the same stations on the same days and combine those together. And so we'll come back and we'll talk about how we can do that in the next video.